Hi there! Welcome to Pallet University. Anytime a new Pokemon game comes out, I always have sort of one thought. I have, well, I have many thoughts about pretty much every Pokemon game, but there's one singular thought that I have anytime any new Pokemon game comes out, and that is, where is this region relative to the rest? You know, in on the Pokemon globe. Where does this region sit? And for most side games, you don't really get an answer. There's kind of some clues, you know, in uh, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness and Pokemon Coliseum where Ore is, but for games like the Pokemon Ranger series, there's not really an answer. There's definitely not really an answer for the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, as much as I love them, but there just may be an answer to where the Lentil region is in new Pokemon Snap. There are many ways that I sort of try to think about where a region lies relative to some of the other regions, but some of the main ones are things like what Pokemon are found there, which gets much easier when you consider uh, things like regional variants. That makes this kind of thing way easier for reasons that I'll talk about in a little bit. And also, I try as much as I can, although it's usually not very helpful, to think about some of the geology, because Pokemon never, ever, ever really puts any effort into thinking about the geology of their games, much to my chagrin, but there are sometimes some clues. First, let's take a look at the Lentil region sort of in isolation, without trying to place it amongst the other regions. Similar to the Alola region, the Lentil region is sort of a chain chain of islands, you know, it, but it, it, they're kind of arranged in a way that doesn't geologically make that much sense. You know, for the Alola region, allegedly, uh, I actually made a whole video about why it's like allegedly based off of Hawaii, the Alola region. You should check that out. Anywho, um, just the way they're arranged doesn't actually make sense geologically, you know, so because in Alola, they're sort of in a horseshoe shape which makes absolutely no sense for how volcanic islands form. You know, there's a reason that the Hawaiian islands all make a nice chain. You know, it's a little curved, but it's not that strong of a curve. Uh, and that's because, quick geology lesson here. So, the way the uh, Hawaiian islands form, there is a hot spot, a, a particularly warm spot of magma underneath the Earth's crust. Basically, the uh, Pacific Plate, you know, the, the continental plate uh, that the Pacific Ocean sort of sits on top of, that moves, but the hot spot does not. So the hot spot will sit here. And so if this is the hot spot and this is the plate, the plate will sit on top of it and pop up an island right, say like right there. But then the plate will move, but the hot spot will not. The plate will move and up pops another island. It doesn't create sort of a long stretch of land, it creates islands because magma doesn't always happen consistently. Sometimes there'll be a big pulse of it that creates a new island. There'll be a little bit of a lull in some of the sort of magma activity. Then there'll be another pulse that creates another new island. Uh, so as the plate moves and sort of curves as it moves, that creates the chain of Hawaiian islands, which makes sense that they're all in a line. Alola is not at all like that. And unless there's some real funky stuff going on with the tectonic plates of the Pokemon world, uh, Alola did not form the same way that Hawaii did. It makes a little more sense, you know, it's, it's more plausible that the Lentil region was formed this way because we see an active volcano, which I, I guess we kind of do in Alola as well. Not kind of, we definitely do in Alola. But uh, we see an active volcano and other than the, the reef, you know, the Maricopia Island, which isn't really an island that can be explained uh through corals making that island uh it's called creating an atoll um it's really neat geological process that i don't really have time to go into here but it's really neat basically corals forming an island around where there used to be an island or sometimes if it's just shallow enough for corals to grow they can just start building and eventually they can create sort of an island so that that was not formed the same way the other islands likely were so it is possible they're in vaguely a line, you know, the, the other four islands. It vaguely makes a straight line. So that's more plausible than in Alola. But with islands, it's so much more difficult to figure out exactly where they sort of are in the ocean of the Pokemon world, because unlike Kanto and Johto, 
you know, well, for them, they actually give you a map showing where they connect, but, you know, they're both on the mainland. And, you know, connecting Johto to Sinnoh was pretty easily figured out because the geography just sort of makes sense. Mount Coronet roughly lines up with uh, a lot of things such as Mount Silver in between Kanto and Johto. So some of the geography makes sense. However, with oceans, there's not really just a lot of geography to work with. That large digression to say that it is possible that the islands of the Lentil region were sort of formed in the same process as the Alola region, but I kind of don't think so. Regardless, I think that they kind of must be near each other, mostly because of the Pokemon that you find. Most animals that wind up on islands in the real world do so through what's called waif colonization, not like waifu. No, not that. Waif. Basically surfing. Uh, you know, something might, in a big storm, get blown out to this island when it's not terribly far away from, you know, the coast of, of the mainland, or could get stuck on, like, a log or, like, a, a mat of some kind of floating vegetation, and then get rafted from the mainland to the island. That's how a lot of islands get some of, like, their lizard species. Uh, you know, with things like birds, obviously they can fly, but for things like lizards, snakes, you know, mammals, mice, things like that, other than being brought by humans, that's usually how they get to islands. And this methodology also sort of really supports the Alola region and the Lentil region being relatively close to each other, because most of the Pokemon found on the Lentil region are also found in Alola. Without including any of the Pokemon from the newly announced Pokemon Snap DLC, because I don't know all of them, I don't know if even, like, we know all of them, I do know that Tropius, right there, right, right there, is getting put in, and I could not be happier because Tropius is one of my favorite Pokemon. But, uh, out of all the Pokemon that we know for sure are in new Pokemon Snap, around 61 or so percent of them are also found in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon in the Alola region. Not to mention, there are Alolan forms of most of these Pokemon. Most of the Alolan forms can be found in the Lentil region as well, which, based on how evolution works, it would be extremely, extremely unlikely for sort of these selective pressures to cause some of these uh, regional variants to form in both Alola and Lentil separately. That would be extraordinarily unlikely. In fact, what I think happened with some particular Alolan forms was that some of them came to Alola first and then were sort of surfed, rafted, from Alola to Lentil. But others, I think, went came to Lentil first, then got blown to Alola from there. So they should be called Len Lentilin? Lentalian? Lentilese? Some kind of Lentil forms. First, Alolan Raichu is found in both Alola and Lentil. But that one's a little tricky, because that one is it's kind of canon. I believe it's one of its Pokedex entries that says that it, it's because of the food that it eats that turns it, you know, allows Pikachu to evolve into this particular form instead of the normal Raichu. So as long as there's the same plants, which that one wouldn't even need storms, you know, plants with their pollen could just blow very, very far distances out to sea. That's not uncommon. So if the wind is just blowing the right direction, I don't really know whether Raichu would have, you know, became Alolan Raichu in Lentil or Alola. There's no real way to say that. As long as the food influences it in the same way and the same plants are present, then it could do it in either place, which is why we see that. We also see Alolan Vulpix and Alolan Sandshrew in Lentil, which is interesting because we actually also see the Cantonian forms of Sandshrew and at least Ninetales. I don't believe we see actual Vulpix, but we do see Cantonian Ninetales. So it's interesting that we see both in the same region natively, completely in the wild. What I suspect happened with those two particular Pokemon was that they got blown to the Lentil region from somewhere that they're both native, another region, and they got stuck on Durice Island, the frozen island in New Pokemon Snap. Those populations, because of the cold climate, ended up being selected toward being ice types instead, and, you know, adapting and becoming ice types, whereas on the other islands, 
they stayed their normal selves because there wasn't that same selection pressure to become ice types. Then some big storm came and blew the newly ice type Alolan, Sandshrew, and Vulpix from Durice Island in the Lentil region to the Alola region. So those two in particular probably should be called, I'll have to come up with an actual word, Lent Lentil forms for now, uh, Lentil Lentalian forms uh, instead of Alolan forms. And I would actually suspect that the wind blows from Lentil to Alola because for some reason, we still see the Cantonian forms of the Geodude line, Rattata, although the Rattata could have come with the Professor, so there's an asterisk on that one. And also Meowth, but again, we see Meowth only in the research lab course, so it's like, maybe it might be native, it might be something that just came with the Professor, but we definitely at least see the Geodude line, the Cantonian Geodude line. So it would make sense if they first came to the Lentil region and then a storm came and blew them from the Lentil region to Alola, where they then diversified into the Alolan Geodude line that we all know and love. All right, so we've kind of established that the Lentil region is near-ish to the Alola region. But sort of where? You know, there's lots of ocean around Alola, so where could the Lentil region be? Well, first, I would expect that the Alola region is basically on the equator. You know, the, the justification for Alolan Executor to grow as tall as it does into its, you know, true form, as the uh, Alolan Pokedex calls it, is because it gets so much more sunlight, which pretty much happens at the equator. You know, the equator is called that because it has equal night and day throughout the entire year. Whereas if you move more north or south in the equator, you will get sometimes more, sometimes less, just less consistent sunlight. And interestingly, we have Executor on the Lentil region, but we do not have a Lolan Executor, implying that it gets less sunlight in the Lentil region than it does in the Alola region. Based on that and the fact that Durice, once again the frozen island in New Pokemon Snap, is in the north of the map, that would tell me that the Lentil region is probably somewhere to the north of the Alola region. I would probably guess that it would be to the northwest of the Alola region. Likely because otherwise, you know, to get from Durice Island to blow the newly formed Lentalian, Lentalese, however, uh, Santru and Vulpix from Durice Island to Alola, uh, if it was anywhere else, for example, if it was in the northeast, that the wind that would have to do that would also have to blow through the other islands to get to Alola as well. This was a little bit of a long sort of rambly uh, thought that I had while I was at work the other day. So let me know all of your thoughts on this long ramble. Let me know if it even made sense because I'm also recording this relatively late at night. So who knows at this point. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at palette underscore you to keep up on all things Pokemon science. A massive, massive, massive thank you to our patrons over on Patreon, Patty Murphy, Sam McCarty, and Jameer Connolly. Your support as always is immensely appreciated. And lastly, thank you so much just for watching, and as always, there's a time and place for everything.